Okay, recording started. I'll start by going over the homework. So the document. I'll just send the link again in the chat. In case you can't find it. Or if you want to follow along. Okay, so here's the homework. Calculators are allowed. And please keep your answer somewhere so that we can go over it next class. This is this time's homework. And then I'll notify you when the when next time's homework is released. And it's always on the same document. Okay, so the first question. I'll start. Does anyone want to first send send me all the answers that you have? And then, and then, does anyone want to do number one? If not, then I'll do it. Okay, then, so <clears throat> I'll just start number one. So Kate has five flowers, which have one, three, five, seven, and nine petals each. She now tears off one petal from each of three different flowers. She repeats this until it is no longer possible to tear off one petal from three different flowers. What is the minimum number of flower petals left over? Th also, all of these are very similar to problems that we had in last week's class section, but they're made a little harder. They're all about the same thing, though, so if you need help with the problems, you can just watch the lecture recording. Okay, so the first one, instead of flowers, it would be much easier to just draw boxes and then fill them in once we have picked the flower off. So here's the one, three, and then the five and this is the seven and the nine And then we'll put check marks in the boxes to show which ones we've filled. So let's just fill up the first one. So one, and then put two in the largest boxes. Here you do the same. And this is really easy as long as you stay organized. And don't make any silly mistakes. So we've done the most we can do, which and this was pretty quick. We started by filling up the smallest, and the second smallest, and then as much as we could through the third smallest. And the minimum number of flower petals left over are these four boxes, which means that the answer for number one is four. Okay, so problem two. A small zoo has a giraffe, an elephant, a lion, and a turtle. Susie wants to visit exactly three of the animals today, but does not want to visit the lion first. How many possibilities can she see the animals if she cannot visit a single animal more than once? Okay, so this is just like the zoo problem from the last week's problem set. And we'll just write down... G for giraffe, E for elephant, L for lion, and T for turtle. 
and then we'll just write down like different sort of words for example if Susie visits the turtle the lion and the elephant then what we'll write down is T L E okay so that's done Okay, so let me rewrite these. Actually. Okay, so giraffe, lion, elephant, lion, and turtle. Let's just write these down. She doesn't want to visit the lion first, so the three options we have to start are G for giraffe, E for elephant, and T for turtle. Let me just start with G. Let me start with. G E T and G T E. And or we can also add in the line, so G E L and G L E G E G L T and G T L. Okay, so that's all the ones that we can do starting with G. And for elephant it's the same. You just you just switch elephant with giraffe in all of these. So, what you would have is that giraffe, the, if she visits the giraffe first, then there's six ways that she could visit them all. The elephant first, she can visit them six ways total. And the lion, it's zero because she does not want to visit the lion first. And the turtle is six. So the total, the total sum of six, six, zero, and six is 18. So that would be your answer. Okay, so we're done with problem two. Let's go on to problem three. Okay, someone else joined. So we're currently doing the... We're currently doing the... The homework questions. And then after this, we'll get on to the main questions. Can anyone check? Am I, am I recording right now? Yeah, recording. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so let's keep going on problem three. Five brothers have eaten 16 biscuits altogether. Three of them ate 12 total and three ate two biscuits actually replace this with two sorry about three just no three i think i wrote this wrong and one of those three ate two biscuits actually no sibling ate less than two biscuits how many biscuits did the other two siblings eat so that's a total so let's just write them out as a, that's brother A, B for brother B, C for brother C, and D for brother D. Oh yeah, also E for brother E. So that's all five brothers, and then we after, under the each of the letters for the names, then we can just write down how many biscuits they each ate. So let's just put the circle to show which were part of the three that ate 12 total. So among these all, there were 12 biscuits. And then the others ate, and then the others ate, uh, one of these three ate two. So we can just say that A ate two. Then we can, we can write that B and C altogether ate 10 biscuits. Okay, so B and C ate 10, D and E, let's see what's left over. So 16 biscuits total, minus 12 biscuits eaten by A, B, and C, leaves 4 biscuits eaten by D and E, so 4 here. And they can't be the same, so you can't have D eats 2 and E eats 2. You must have D eats 1 and E eats 1, or uh, D eats 3 and E eats 1. 
And, but that's not really relevant because we're asking for how many biscuits did the other two siblings eat, which refers to D and E. And them and D and E together ate four total biscuits. So that would be your answer for problem three. For problem three, don't go too far and just figure out everything. All you need to do is just figure out what you're told to find. Okay, so now we're on to problem four. George starts his training at 5 o'clock in the morning. It takes him 5 minutes to get to the bus stop. The bus journey takes 20 minutes, and then he has to walk for 5 minutes to get to the soccer pitch. The bus comes at 6 o'clock in the morning for the first time and then every 10 minutes. What is the latest possible time he has to leave the house in order to be on the pitch at time? On time. So the bus comes at 6 o'clock in the morning. And comes every 10 minutes, which means that every 10 minutes, every time the every time the number of minutes there are is a multiple of 10, that means that is the but that's the time that bus comes. For example, six o'clock in the morning, or six ten in the morning, or maybe seven thirty in the morning. Then we could extend that to the afternoon, say five o'clock in the afternoon, five ten, or four or 4.50 in the afternoon. So all of those times the bus will come. So we're just looking for everything where the units digit on the time is zero. Okay, now let's make a timeline. So the last, the last event is that he arrives at uh, 5 p.m. Then we can have another line showing uh, the bus arrives and there's five minutes in between so this must be 450 the bus arrives at four actually not 450 it arrives at 455 because he takes five minutes to walk there and the difference between 455 and five is five minutes now the bus journey takes 20 minutes However, you can't have it start at 4.35 p.m. because that's not when the bus comes. The latest time before 4.35 is 4.30, so we can have the bus come at 4.30 and the bus arrive. And we can have the bus arrive at 4.50. So then we'll have to change this time, 4.50, and the bus leaves at 4.30. And then 4.30 p.m. The bus leaves at 4.30 p.m. And it takes them five minutes to walk to the bus stop. So five minutes before 4.30 p.m. is 4.25. So 4.25, he leaves the house. So your answer for problem four would be 4.25 p.m. Okay, so that's all of the the homework problems. Let's go on to the let's go on to the uh, problems for this time's class. So here we have uh, twenty eighteen problems, and we'll just start with the final problem. So each of these four balls, A, B, C, and D, weighs either 10, 20, 30, or 40 grams. Which ball weighs 40 grams? Okay. So what we're trying to do is figure out what the weights are A, B, C, and D, given that A plus B, using these scales, A plus B is greater than, we use this to... We use this to show greater than is greater than C plus D because A and, A and B are heavier and so they weigh down C and D more. Then B plus D is equal to C. Okay. So all of these are 10, 20, 30, or 40. So we can have 
c is equal to b plus d so we can have c is equal to 40 or c is equal to 30. and then what we want is because c plus d is lighter than a plus b we could have d be the lighter one out of b and d so here d would be is equal to 10 and here d is also equal to 10. and if c is 40 C is equal to 40, then D is equal to 10, and B is equal to 30. Then because of that, A is equal to 20. Let's see if that fits the first one. So A plus D is greater than C plus D. No, A plus B is greater than C plus D. We can add a and b so you have 30 20 and 30 and d is 10 c is 40 then those add together for a plus b is 50 and c plus d is also 50 so you can't have that because it must be greater than they can't be equal okay so let's erase this and also erase c is 40 and d is 10. we'll replace that with a better one c is 30 so d must be 10 and because it has to be the smaller one and b has to equal 20. and because of that the only one left over is a so a is equal to 40. Okay, so let's add these up. A plus B is 20 plus 40. So 20 plus 40 is equal to 60. And C plus D is 10 plus 30. So 10 plus 30 is equal to 40. And 60 is greater than 40. Actually, that's not a 6 minus. It's a 6, 0. 60 is greater than 40. So the one that weighs 30 grams here must be C. So your answer for 24 is C. Okay. So problem 23. Leah should write the numbers 1 to 7 in the field of the given figure. Uh, there is only one number allowed in every field. And also two fields are adjacent if they have one edge or one corner in common. What numbers can she write in the field with the equation mark, with the question mark? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Consecutive numbers cannot be in adjacent fields. Two fields are adjacent if they have one edge or corner in common. Oh, so corner is in common too. That would be a little bit harder. So what we can try is to have... Let's drop. Let's actually write them in the box. So... Focus, focus your attention on this box here. We, we have the question mark cannot be adjacent to, so it can't be greater than, and all, all the question marks surrounding it can't be next to each other either. So we can just say that it is one. And then the three boxes next to it, say this one, all of these are two, Three and four. Actually, we can't have that, so we'll just say five. Okay, so let's just put one here. Two, three, and five. Oops. Okay, so you have three numbers left over, which are four, six, and seven. Let's just put these in however we want. So we can do 4, we can do 6 here, and we can do 7 here, and that satisfies it. So the number we can do is 1. Let's put a circle around that so we don't forget it. Okay, so now we're on to the next one. We can try 2 this time, so the center is 2. Question mark is equal to 1. 
Okay, so all the ones surrounding it, there can't be 1 and there can't be 3 because 3 is next to 2. And 2 of the numbers can't be next to each other. So we can have question mark is equal to 2. And we can have 4, 5, and 7. Let's just put that. 2 here, a 4, a 5, and a 7. The reason we put the 4 and the 5 not next to each other is because then they would be adjacent because they share a corner. And we can't have that. So now into the next, now into the other numbers left over, we have 1, 3, and 6 left over. So we can put this as we have 6 here. 6 is not next to 2 or 4. 1 is not next. Oh, we can't have 1 there because then it's next to 2. So let's remove that. And what we have left is 3. Oh, we can't do that either. Let's see. So we can't have 2 or 3 next to 2. So that's not allowed. Okay, so the all the ones we have left, it can't be uh so we one works but two does not. So it is not a because one because one works and two doesn't. You can't have all seven numbers work because one already doesn't work. Next, only odd numbers that might work, only even numbers does not. The number four. Because it asks which numbers she can, that means that all of the other numbers can't. So, number 4 is removed. The number is 1 or 7. Let's try this. So, odd numbers. Let's try only odd numbers. If that, if 3 doesn't work, that means that our answer must be E for problem 23. So, let's see. Question mark is equal to 3. We, well, the numbers that we can use are 1, 5, 6, 7 for the surrounding numbers. And the numbers that aren't touching the original square, we can use 2, 4. And hmm. yeah, 2 and 4 or 5. Six, seven. And we must have one, two, three, four, five numbers which are ne which are not next to it. So let's try this. Let's try three. So we must have three in the middle. Let's put that there. Then we have one, five, six, and seven. Let's put one here. Uh oh, five. This one can't be here because that's to separate the Five and the six. So six here and one here. So what we have left to place are two, four, and seven. Let's try this. So we have two here. No, we can't have that. We can have four here. We can, we can have two and then we can have seven. But there's one problem with this, which is you see these two and three in the box? That means that they are connected. They're connected by a corner, so we cannot have three. That means that B is out. Because only odd numbers means that three would have to work, and three does not. So, for problem 23, our answer would be E. Okay, so problem 23, you need to use process of elimination. This is a little harder, and it also only works for multiple choice, because you're... Process, process of elimination makes it so that you remove the answers that are not right instead of finding the answer that is right. So, and it makes the answer, finding the answer a lot easier. Instead of having to check all seven and then writing down the answer, we can just check three, one, two, and three. And with those, we can figure out the answer. Okay. Oh, we are running low on time. These problems are rather tough, so let's just continue and see how far we can get. A decorated glass, glass tile is mirrored several times along the boldly printed edge. So these four edges, these three edges, one, two, and three. 
The first mirror image is shown. What does the far right look like after the third reflection? Okay, so we have six objects in a ring, and they're reflected like a mirror over these lines. What I think we can do is that we can just track one each. We can track with them all of these objects one at a time. This is how I did these problems. Let's start by tracking the dolphin. The dolphin reflects over this line, so it starts here, and then it reflects over the line and goes here. And the dolphin then reflects over this line and goes here, and then reflects far, far over this line, and ends up up here on top, if you look at it, because this goes two triangles over here, and it must change its direction over the mirror and go two more triangles, so it ends up on top of the hexagon. And this makes it super easy, because now we know that the dolphin must be on the top triangle, and there's only one answer where the dolphin is on the top triangle, so our answer would be B. This is a very easy question. I'm not sure why it was placed so far at the end above the other questions, because all you have to do is just track one object. And if you track one object, then you can get the answer. It's super easy. Okay, so problem 21. A belt can be joined together in five different ways. How many centimeters is the belt longer if it's only closed in the first hole instead of in all five holes? Hmm. Okay, so what I figured out is that these five black dots over here are the pins, and then the pins go in the hole. But you, for example, in this picture, the first pin can probably only go in this hole, but you can also have all five pins go into all five holes. So we're trying to figure out what's the difference between the length from the, if it goes through the smallest hole and the largest hole. And I figured out a pretty tricky way to do this. So, if you have a, in, if you have it in such a way that it overlaps, the total length means that there must be some parts cut off. that are extra, just hanging out. So, the extra parts all start from where the last pins meet. So, here. And here. That means that Let's also mark one more thing. The distance between these two lines. Do you see? Can you see the yellow lines clearly? Or should I change the colors? I'll just change the colors. So these yellow lines, these blue lines, the distance between these blue lines, let's just put it as 10, just for everything to be easy. And then there's four gaps of two centimeters each, plus four over here, which means that 10. 10 plus 8 plus 8 is equal to 26. So it's 26 total if you only cover up one hole. Now let's see covering up all five holes. That means that the last one, the last ones end. So all of them are covered up and the total length of the loop starts at the first, first hole, the last hole in the first pin. So what we can see is that, obviously, that means the distance between these two lines. If you just cut off everything outside of it, if you cut off everything outside and then loop it around, then the length of the belt would be 10 centimeters. So 10 is equal to 10. And we're looking for what's the difference between the longest and the shortest versions. So 26 minus 10 gives you D, which is 16. So your answer for problem 21 will be 16. This question isn't... Hmm. This question isn't exactly hard, but does require some thinking and some trying to visualize the belt. And if you can visualize the belt, then this question will be very easy. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think we can finish problem 20. So the numbers, the symbols, the I, the sun, the, let's just say this is a atom, because it looks like the atom. This would, I would say is, 
Hmm. Looks like a bug, like the back of a bug, and then a fish. So let's just call these that. So atom plus the atom is the fish. The sun plus the sun is the atom. And the sun plus the fish is equal to bug. So what number stands for the digit 3? Okay, so what we see is that sun plus sun is equal to atom. So 2 times sun is equal to atom. And then we have 2 times atom is equal to fish. Also, that means that 4 times sun is equal to fish. With this, we can figure out what the sun and the fish are. They can all be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the only thing that the, the sun could be is 1. If, if the sun were 2 or anything higher, then fish would be greater than 5. And you can't have that. So sun is 1. Let's just write it here. Sun is 1. And fish is 4. And with that logic, then 2 is the atom. Now we keep on going with that. So sun plus fish is equal to bug. Sun is 1, fish is 4, so bug is 5. And the only one left over is 3. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's just check these. So atom plus atom is fish. 2 plus 2 is 4. That is correct. Sun plus sun is atom. 1 plus 1 plus equals 2. That is correct. And last, sun plus fish is bug. 1 plus 4 is 5. That is correct. And so the only one left over that's not used in any of these equations is the i, which is 3. And here they ask, which symbol stands for the digit 3? And the answer to that is the i. Okay. So we have finished the last four, the last five questions. And I'll just, what I'll do is I'll make many, I'll make uh, five questions. Five questions total for all five of these questions. I'll modify these questions to be a lot harder. And if you ever need help, you can just look up these questions. Do you want me to send the link for this competition in the chat? I'll just do it. So here's the link for the competition. If you want to review or look at the questions. And it could also be helpful while looking at the lecture the lecture recording okay so now that we are all all done with the questions the last five questions i'll tell you when i release the new questions i'll stop sharing them okay does anyone have any questions no questions okay then uh bye everyone Bye. Thanks. No problem. I'll end the meeting now. Bye.